Uh, Obadiah, you want to open us up in prayer, Aki? We got some reading to get to. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you through uh, seeing us through a, uh, another year to keeping us in good health and uh, clear of mind, uh, lucid of mind, that we uh, can go and praise your name, tell others about your wondrous love, and show them how we've grown since we've come to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the goodness that you uh, shown us by putting your Ruach in us, that we uh, gather together and uh, learn more about you because that's what it's all about, to learn the way of our king, our leader, the one that gives us good commands, that uh, keeps us on the straight and narrow road that uh, one day we might be with him in paradise. Now, Heavenly Father, for those that uh, was not able to come and join us today, bless them and bless everyone on the call that whether they are uh, here right now or they're coming, uh, give them a, a, an extra dose of blessings. And Heavenly Father, for those out there that are uh, wondering where to find a way to get closer to you. Uh, you know, you have uh, plenty of soldiers in the field uh, doing your work. And we uh, hope that, that one day they can find one that can uh, let them know that, hey, all you have to do is this, that, and the other, and you'll find people of like mind. And that is so true because uh, when I came to Austin, I did not uh, really know anyone, but I've made some uh, wonderful connections since I've been here. And I thank you for that because had it not been for your love and kindness and guidance, I would still be groping in the dark. Now, Heavenly Fathers leads us on today's lesson. Let our minds be open let us be very receptive of the information that's being given out to us. And we bless you for your wonderful love and your uh, teaching of your word. In the name of your son, uh, Yahshua, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom, everyone. Hallelujah. It's good to hear. Good to hear you're doing well. Hallelujah. So as we, we're near the end of the book of Hoshiah. Let me bring his name up. Hoshiah. Hoshiah. I think I'm going to do Makai next. I don't know. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm kind of reading through both of them right now. Makai and between Makai and Isaiah. We'll do them both. I just don't know which order to do them in. They, they fall in the same time. They were prophesying at the same time. And Makai is much shorter than Isaiah. So I'm kind of thinking about doing the shorter one first. Um, we're going to spend some time in Isaiah. Uh, like I say, though, I've kind of been reading through both of them. Though. Hoshia. So this prophet. As you see, Hosea is the name of the book of the Bible, but in Hebrew, his name would be pronounced. Hosea. Hosea. They say Hosea, but I think the pronunciation is actually Hosea. But either way, we see it means deliverer, right? And it says that it's from H 3467, which is always interesting because it is. Yeshia, right? And it means deliver as well, salvation. This is where you get some people to say um, the different variations of the name of the Messiah. 
but Hoshia, the deliverer. So this prophet is representing a deliverance from Yah. And we know that he's speaking to, um, we've timelined this up. He has, oh, we've been trying to timeline it up, I should say. He has been speaking to, um, Israel as a whole, Judah, everybody, but he keeps talking, he keeps keying on the specific tribe in the northern tribes of Ephraim. Um, and he's going to key on them again today. And he's going to speak to the whole nation as well. And we see in this that Ephraim has, Ephraim really just unpuffed itself up, but it's not just Ephraim in the north. Dan has already started the idol worship. You know, they've been mentioning judges with that. In the south, Benjamin has been mentioned with that. So it's not just the northern tribes, but the northern tribes, um, I'll say, have probably been more egregious than the south at this point to where Yah is like, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to, um, you know, you reap what you sow, basically. And we know that Yah has, has said through this that <clears throat> um, the southern tribes day is coming as well. So as we um, as we go back through this, when we end it, uh, Hoshiah chapter 11, he said, um, and we read it from the Septuagint, I believe we read that, yeah, he said that Ephraim has compassed me with falsehoods and the house of, and the house of Israel and Yehuda with ungodliness, you know, basically he like that, the, the tribes is out of order, but Ephraim, um, your idol worship or you wanting to be part of the ways of the world, uh, do what the world is doing and not what y'all is calling us to do because it's as you always have to remember when it comes to the scriptures or whatnot um and i'm sure it's it's, it's coming more and more clear to view now as we study and, and go through more of this together but the ways that y'all because the bible which you hear people say torah as, as i know shelly broke it down before um it just means instructions so the bible is really instructions that's what it's called hebraically the instructions from Yah or the instructions from God, as some people will say, right? And in those instructions, when you learn those instructions, you'll realize that um, what's acceptable in society or in the world, as people would say, what's acceptable, um, what's okay, um, what's honored, and a lot of, in most cases, is, I say most cases because you know, everybody knows whether they do or not, but everybody knows you shouldn't steal from nobody. Everybody knows you shouldn't commit murder. Everybody knows you shouldn't uh, be raping children. You know, some things that that every, even though it happens, everybody know. At a, as a child, you know, like at a young child, children know, like you don't steal from nobody. Without even really being taught that, you just know that growing up, you shouldn't be stealing from nobody. But, and that's why I say most, because in, the, in most other things though, the instructions of the most high are different than what's acceptable in society in the world. Um, for example, the holidays are different. Um, um, who the Messiah was is different. You know, the world will tell you that the Messiah was Jesus Christ. This European with blue eyes. And um, if you study the image, at least the one that Da Vinci was painting, which is the famous Last Supper, uh, which is, um, he got a few other. I know he got the one of John the Baptist with his head on the platter. Um, a few others, but I know the, the the images of what we would call Jesus Christ, as they call him, um, the uh, the European with the blue eyes. Da Vinci was making paintings of the Pope at that time, Caesar Borgia's son, which was a friend of his. And some people say it was like he had a homosexual relationship with this person. And when they asked him to paint these pictures of the Messiah, because remember back then you couldn't just do that. The church had to sign off on it. The, the, the Roman Catholic Church slash the Pope had to sign off on that. And the Pope told him to paint the images of his son. So a lot of these pictures that you see, especially that Last Supper, that famous one you always see, that's the Pope's son, Caesar Borgia, right? And like I say, he was, uh, you could study his life. He was considered to be a homosexual and you know, they was just, you know, they was into all type of things that go against the instructions of the Bible. I say that to say the difference between the world and the Bible is when you read the Bible, you read about uh, this Hebrew who was not a European. His name was some people, some people may call him Hoshiah. You'll hear Yeshiah, Yahawashah. 
Yeshua, all words that, um, for the most part, I believe that in the in the in the uh, in the Hebrew dictionary um, mean deliverer or salvation, safety, things like that. You can say that in a multitude of ways in Hebrew. There isn't just one word for the word salvation. With that being said, though, um, there's a difference between who the world calls the Messiah and who the Bible calls the Messiah. In the Bible, he was had red eyes. Like, just think of that. In the Bible, when he's defining Revelation, it says he has eyes of fire, I believe. Like, they would be a, a reddish color like that. The pictures always have a blue eye Messiah. It says that he would have hair of wool, right? Which is... Um, a fro, possibly dreads, something, you know, wool is a really strong fabric. The Messiah painted on the pictures has long, straight, stringy hair. You know, it says that he would be of polished brass as if burned in the furnace. And brass is already brown. If you burn brass in the furnace, you're looking at a dark brown. Um, um, the Messiah the world honors is a lighter complected Messiah um, of European descent, basically. So when I say that, and this is what Yah is saying, that Ephraim, when he said falsehood or idol worship, Ephraim has basically took on the ways of the nations around them, a.k.a. the world. And he's like, the house of Israel is going to partake in that, and so is Yehuda, right? But now Elohim knows them, and they shall be called Elohim's holy people. He's saying, with all that being said, I'm still going to come and get. I'm going to forgive. Even though you're about to go into slavery and uh, Yehuda, which is Judah, you'll go 100 years later. I'm still going to spare a group of y'all, a remnant, as, it, as, it, as it'll say, as we continue to go through these prophets. Um, and that's in the mercy of Yah. So when we start Hoshiah chapter 12, <clears throat> and I know this first verse, it was I was reading it from the Septuagint because as you see in KJV, it said, it says, Ephraim feed on wind and follow after the east wind. Remember, wind in Hebrew is ruach. It could be a spirit. So Ephraim feedeth on spirits and followed after the east wind, which east also represents ancient. Um, to an Israelite back in the day, looking to the east is like looking towards the ancient path. Let me bring up the word for east here. <clears throat> so as you see the word for east, kadim, here, um, it says the four of the front. So you know how when we look at the compass, it always has the arrow pointing north, right? Due north. And then we typically, when you're looking for directions, you would face the on the compass north, and then you would know east, west, south, and where you're going. An ancient Israelite, if he had a compass, his would point east. He would look to the east, and then he would find his sense of direction from the east. But we also see that east represents... East represents four or four part, uh, four front part, um, eastward, but it also represents uh, before or ancient. Here we go, a distant past. So, to an Israelite, the east also represents ancient. So, when you read this in the KJV, this could also mean ancient spirit. It says he daily increased lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians who they're about to go into captivity under, which is ironic. Ephraim is worshiping the gods and doing the things like the Assyrians. And yet Yah's going to make a point. He's like, you acting like them, but you ain't them. To show you you ain't, even though you acting like them, you're going to go into slavery under them and they ain't going to treat you like them. And it's the same thing happened today. We act like the people who oppress us around us. Yet every time the situation arises, they let the descendants of slaves know um, in this country, and I'm sure in other places too, but I don't speak for those places, but in this country, certain things happen and they always let them know, you ain't one of us. Prime example is these police shootings. That don't happen to nobody. Else. Like, and you'll hear the argument that, you'll hear the argument that, um, and this may be true because I've heard people say this, you know, the police kill more white people every year than black people. That may be true because it's more European slash dissented, I mean, a.k.a. white people in America. That may be true, that the police shooting kill more white people than black people every year. It's a good chance that that's true. The difference with the killings is when you do see the videos of 
the white person getting shot and or tased, they be ultimately bogus. <laughs> they ain't real talk. Like they be the got out, stole on the police, ran off, uh, up the pistol on them, be the did everything. Because when you see the videos that the citizen slaves always say, we can't get away with none of that. Yet when you see somebody black get shot by the police, he did nothing but ra run the stop sign and they told him to raise his hands and he raised them fast enough and they shot him. It'd be like that. Like, you don't see that happen to other nations. So you may hear some people say, well, they kill more other people than us. That may be true. There's more other people here than us. But the way that that goes on is totally different. Like, you see it when they pull over other nations. People just hop out the car, cuss the police out. Uh, I remember when they shot homie in, in Minnesota. I think his name was Philando. He told dude, like, you know, I got a Floyd car. My gun is in the glove box. Dude told him, go get the gun. When he reached to give him the gun, he shot him. <laughs> The police told him, go get the gun. Oh, okay, I understand. Get the gun out the glove box. He reached to get the gun out the glove box and he shot him after telling him to get it. And that's an example. That's a marker, as we are, as I've been saying here a lot. That's a marker. We have been assimilated into this culture. Most of the citizens of slaves is happy to be Americans. Um we just going along to get along now. We don't care. You know, we done went to school. We getting jobs. We balling. A lot of a lot of a lot of our people have came up financially in this world. But these nations around us continue to let us know you ain't one of us now. Even the other people who immigrated here, like Africans. Africans who immigrate to America. They come over here, they become doctors and lawyers and accountants and all those good things because they send their best and their brightest. Well, America kind of forces Africa through immigration to send his best and his brightest. They'll get right over here and tell you in the dough, I ain't one of them slaves. I am not a descendant of a slave. It's a difference. Even they'll tell you, you ain't one of us because we not one of them. They hermetic. Color of skin does not mean anything to y'all. It's about the blood that pumped through your veins. A lot of them, and I won't say all of them because being that we are all of a darker complexion, who knows? But a lot of them really are hermetic. Right. So and that's what he's what he's on with Ephraim and Ephraim is fulfilling. It's a marker because that's exactly what's going on today. Ephraim, you want to be like the Assyrians? Cool. Yet the Assyrians, you worship like them. Uh, You 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 get in league with them. You make deals with them. But when it come down to it. They going to put you under their boot. Now you working for them. They're going to let you know that you're not them. Same has happened today. So in. Hoshiah chapter 12, verse 1, when I read it from the Septuagint, which is a, an earlier translation, a better translation than the KJV of the Old Testament from Hebrew, um, to be honest, um, it's considered to be. It reads a little different. It tells us, but Ephraim is an evil spirit. So that feeding on the wind, it lets us know in the Septuagint, it was an evil spirit. And as you see the word here for wind, you all hear us say this a lot. The word for wind is ruach which is, you'll hear me say the Ruach HaKodesh, which means set apart spirit. Because as you see, Ruach means wind because Yah, a, a lot of times a spirit is compared to like the wind. It'll blow as it wants. It says that about what we call the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. It's a scripture that says it blows like the wind. It goes where it wants. And who can tell where the wind goes, right? But um, it, 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 as you see right here, um, it also means spirit, but resemblance spirit, but only of a rational being. And this is why when we see people, you know, when we was going to church growing up and we would see, um, our grandparents or whatnot, and people catch the Holy ghost and everybody jumping around and, you know, doing that, right. This is why we know that's wrong because the actual word in Hebrew for Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKodesh, which is set apart spirit, it says of a rational being. And there was nothing rational about you jumping around and speaking in this gibberish that don't nobody understand and falling all out. That's not that's not the spirit. The spirit doesn't make us do that. So we see in the Septuagint, it says, but Ephraim is an evil spirit. He has chased away the east wind, the ancient path. He has chased the, the ancient path all the day. He has multiplied empty and vain things, worthless things, and made a covenant with the Americans, <laughs> with the Assyrians. And oil has gone in the way of traffic into Egypt. And 
would be the word here for oil means richness or anointing. Basically, um, um, the things that Yah has blessed you with have gone with them into bondage, has been taken from them, but taken into bondage. Remember Egypt, Mitzrayim, the word for Egypt, Mitzrayim represents a place on the map, but it also just represents bondage or a besieged place, um, an adversary. Uh, Patrick, I see your hand. What's going on? As you're talking about everything, I just, you know, the Holy Ghost and stuff, and through my walk, especially before truth, you know, <laughs> since I was looking for, looking for Yah, he kept answering me. Hold on. And uh, remember when we spoke on, on tongues, you know, I've been around individuals that would start speaking in tongues, and I'm like, it never it never resonated in my Ruach, and therefore I knew it wasn't good. Unless I understood what they were saying, then that's not how the Ruach works. You know what I'm saying? I know you could touch more on this because we've spoken in the past, but that's all I had to mention. Correct. No, you're correct. That's true. Um, a lot of people have experienced that. I know people who, um, I know some people who come into the understanding of what we call the awakening of Yah, the the awakening of who his people is and just the truth. Because it really, and, and let me say that too, because that's like a big deal. We the Israelites, and, and that is a big deal. But all, in all actuality, um, the most I don't care that you are Israelite. Like there's no scripture in the Bible that say just because you Israel, you will be saved. Now, you your ancestors did make a blood covenant with me, yeah, I will say, but there's a code of conduct that come with a salvation. Just because we Israel by blood, just because we black people are descendants of slaves does not mean you'll be saved. Just like just because a person isn't a descendant of slave or isn't black does not mean they can't be saved. Um, it's about how you live your life. Now, there is a difference between the covenanted people and not, but uh, just because you're part of the covenant people does not guarantee you anything with the Most High. So I know people who have asked that question or have been in different religions and seen that type of behavior, and they have told me that asking um, leaders or pastors of churches about that behavior and, and, and showing that it wasn't necessarily biblical has been what drove them out of that. So we know Yah uses everything in a specific way, right? But he's letting us know Ephraim has become an evil spirit. Um, he's chasing after worthless things. He daily increases his lies and his idolatry and his adultery and just going against, going with the world, the Assyrians, going against the instruction of Yah. They have made covenant with the Assyrians. You have, you comfortable with them. You rather do what they do. Same as today. When you talk to a lot of people about getting back into the Bible and looking for the truth of it, people are like, nah, I'm comfortable with doing what I do because for financially, they done worked hard and been blessed and got houses and, and, and you know, um, change is just uncomfortable for a lot of people anyway. And a lot of people is like, have made covenant with the ways of the world. They cool with that. And the richness, you know, the things that Yah has blessed them with, is going to be carried into bondage because we know the north we know that Ephraim isn't going into Egypt they're going into Assyria in bondage um Hosea chapter 2 chapter 12 verse 2 it says and Yahuwah hath the controversy with Yehuda and see he lets us know it ain't just Ephraim in the northern tribes because you'll hear that as well you'll hear these so-called awakened tribes of Judah people today which are us our people will try to tell you that we're different than the northern ten tribes. And y'all like, no, you ain't. Because <laughs> he tell us in the very next verse, although he from Bogus, it says y'all have the controversy with Yehuda. And the word here for controversy is read. And it means a contest. You have become an adversary too, Yehuda. I have something to contend with you with. I have a strife. I have something to strive with you with. I got a problem with Yehuda too, is what he said. He says, and we'll punish Yacob according to his ways. To his doings, will he recompense him? So Yah's like, you know, all of y'all, according to, I, I will have to punish your code, in which the word here for your code is Israel. Um, it says Yaakov, but his name was changed to Israel, and I'm going to show that in one second after these next few verses. So verse three says, he took, now he's talking about Yaakov here. When he says that he's using Yaakov, like, I'm going to punish Israel. Yehuda, you file too. I got a problem with you too. But I'm going to punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him? He says, verse three, 
Yaakov, he took his brother by the heel in the womb and by his strength, remember that's how Jacob was born. Esau is his older brother. Esau, the twin, they're twins. Esau was born first and it says that Jacob grabbed Esau's heel and came, you know, and he was, he, he came out of the womb with him. The word here for strength is on. Um, in the sense of effort, but successful, his ability. So by your ability in the womb, you grabbed his heel and you came out of the womb with him. And then he says he had power with Elohim. The word here for power is he was a prince. The word is Sarah, um, which is Sarah's name. Um, this is a this is a one of the, the, the ways it means because Sarah's name, Abraham's wife, Sarah, her name actually represents queen. But we see that same word can be used as a prince, probably a princess as well, um, to prevail, have power as a prince. But he's saying you are a prince. So by your ability that Yah gave you in the womb, you grabbed your brother's heel and you were made a prince. Um, really before Elohim is what that should say instead of with. Verse four, he says, yeah, he had power or he was a prince with the angel. He went over the angel and he prevailed. The word here for prevailed is Yaakov. It means to be able, can, could, or morally, may, he had might. He was a prince. He, As he became a prince, he was able to uh, uh, stand with this angel and he had might. He was able to endure is really what it's trying to tell us here. He was able to endure. It says he wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel. The word here for Bethel, we know, means whenever you see Beth something, Bethel, Beth Haven, Beth this, the bet is the letter in Hebrew, which is the second letter. It represents a B in English. Uh, the second letter in Hebrew, the bet, is a house. It represents a house on the ancient. So whenever you see Beth something, Bethlehem, house of bread, Bethel, we know El is the word for God in Hebrew. So that means house of El. House of God, right? House of, um, I guess El does not necessarily have to just represent Yah because all the other gods would be called Els as well. But this is representing the house of Yah is what he is why he's saying this here. So he's saying Jacob, who became a prince to Yah, he, he was able to, he was, he was able to, he was a prince with this angel and he was able to endure with this angel. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in the house of El, the house of Yah, and there he spake with us. Verse five, and who is us? To the most high Yah, Elohim of hosts, or supreme authority of armies um, of creation. We discussed that word of hosts. It really means Sabaoth. So really what that would say is um, Yahuwah Sabaoth. And Sabaoth means like, Host means head of armies, head of angels, head of stars, head of creation. It's just letting us know that Yah is um, the supreme authority of all things, really. Um, and it says the Lord is his memorial. And the word here for Lord is why we say Yahovah. You know, they try to tell us it's Jehovah, but there is no J in Hebrew. So when, Hos when Hoshia would have been writing this, he would have never called him Jehovah because there is no J in the Hebrew language. He would have called him. Yahuwah, um, right? So he's telling us, you had power of the angel, you were crowned, this prevailed, you endured, or you were crowned a prince with this angel. Um, he wept and made supplication unto him, and he found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Now, he's actually telling us about a story that already happened. It's probably a story a lot of you have heard, because this story gets told a lot. Um, and then, you know, this is just another reason why we read this Bible, because it's, it, it all plays into the next thing. So in 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 Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. Um, this is after Jacob has Jacob has been gone from his parents, as you see, it says Jacob wrestles with God. So or with Yah. Um, Jacob has went to his uncle's house. His mother sent him to his uncle's house because she said she didn't want him to marry a Canaanite. So she sent him to his uncle's house and she told him, um, she was like, Jacob, you know, I'll take a wife from amongst my uncle's um, family, which they are descendants of Shem as well. They aren't the chosen line through Isaac, but they are also descendants of Shem. 
basically he like, I don't want you marrying any of these Canaanites, these Hamites. Go marry. Um, and it ain't no Israel at the time. So he's like, she's like, go marry amongst my family, one of my uncle's daughters, and and you know, um, basically keep it chill. And as he's left, this is his first time seeing Esau, and Esau is calling himself coming to kill him, which he doesn't do because of Yah. But when you get to Genesis 32, 22, it was the night before he saw actually saw Esau, and it says, he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants, which is Rachel, Leah, uh, Bilhah, and um, I can't even think of the other one name. I'm wild. What's the other? What was the other servant name he had the children by? Rachel, Leah, Bill, Hyde, who? One of you all know. Put it in the chat if you figure it out. I can't remember her name. So Rachel, Leah, Bill, Hyde. I'm drawing a blank. But they were really all his wives. But two of them were the servants of his two wives. And, and he married them and had children by them, too. Ain't no baby mamas back in this time. If you had, if you were sleeping with a woman and having children, she was your wife. <laughs> uh -huh. It say, and his 11 sons, because Benjamin hadn't been born yet. And he passed over the ford, your book. It says, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had. So before he met Esau, basically, he made them go across this waterway. Like, you know, if we get up here and get to fight and y'all need to flee or do whatever, protect the children. They probably had a lot of wood because he had a lot of cattle, a lot of servants. He had wealth. So it ain't just them. It's, it's, I'm sure it's a, it's a big troop of them. Um, and he's trying to protect. Look, if we get up here and get the fight. Esau get the tripper. Y'all take my kids and his wealth and y'all need to probably make it to where my father at. Don't stop until y'all get to where my father at. It's probably what he's telling them. Um, verse 24 says, and Jacob was left alone. So he went and slept by himself on the back on the other side of the river to meet Esau first. It says, and there he wrestled a man. He wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So he wrestled with a man. But we see it says Jacob wrestles God. So this man that they're saying he wrestled is the representation of the Most High again, which we know the only man that has come from heaven and represented the Most High is Yahushua, the Messiah, right? So he really wrestled the Messiah, right? This is my belief of this all. Zilpha, thank you. Zilpha is the other woman's servant's name. I forgot Jacob's wife, my bad, uh, Grandpa. <laughs> But he's really wrestling the Messiah. This is the man that comes as a man and represents the Most High. It says, and when he saw that he prevailed, see, there go that word prevailed again. He was crowned. He was given power. He endured against him or not against him, but he endured. He was able to hold his own. He touched the hollow of his thigh. This man who represents Yah, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with the man. Or maybe Jacob touched his thigh, but he, he messed up his leg wrestling with this man who represents Yah, although he was able to endure. And he said, let me go for the day breaker. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. So uh, he's able to hold on, basically. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. So we see. Uh, he asked him, he asked Jacob, what is your name? After he, after Jacob is wrestling with this man, he's able to prevail. He's able to endure. You know, he sees that Yah has, 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 has um, anointed him with a crown. He's made him a prince is what Yah is saying in Oshia when we get back. Uh, and verse 28, it said, and he said, thy name should be called no more Yacob. Now remember, this is the Messiah who Yacob is with. And this is where his name was changed from Yacob to Israel because he is the father of the 12 sons who make up the 12 tribes of Israel. And then he tells them, for as a prince, see, he prevailed. He was given power. He was made a prince. Has thou power with Elohim and with men and has prevailed. You ain't the king. You the patriarch of your family, which is going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. It's going to be the nation of Yah. But you only a prince in Yah's army, right? Which is still a lofty position, <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. But he said he was given power with Elohim and he has prevailed. So when we go back to Hoshia, he like, uh, when he tell him, yeah, verse four again, 12, Hoshia 12, four, he's like, uh, yeah, he had power over the angel. He was made a prince with this angel, as we just seen. 
and prevailed. He was able to endure. He was able to hold his own as the word here for prevailed is still up. Yaakov, he was able to endure. He had might. Um, he was just able, really. Nobody else is able to prevail with this prince and all that or with this angel. And this because this angel is the Messiah. And he is second in the chain of command in heaven under Yah, right? He wept and made supplication unto him. Who did? The angel. Him and the angel, they wept and made supplication. He found him in Bethel, where this took place was Bethel, which was in, in Hebrew, Bethel means the house of Elohim, the house of God, right? And it says, and there he spake with us. Who is us? The Most High Yah, Sabuo, the head of creation. Yah is his memorial, and the word here for memorial is just talking about his name, um, his recollection, his remembrance, his scent. So what it's telling us is, is as Jacob wrestled with uh, the Messiah, he was crowned a prince with this angel, which is the Messiah. His name was changed to Israel, and he prayed with the Messiah to the Most High at this place, right? So in this whole shy, he's letting us know when he says, and I will punish your cold. This is why I said it really means I will punish Israel because it tells us the story where Jacob's name was changed to Israel and where he was officially made. Um, he was a made a prince at birth, but this is where he got the stamp from Yah of approval, um, if that make any sense. So Hoshia was, as I said, uh, He's speaking of the ancient path to tell a prophecy. Remember, Hoshiah is prophesying of what's about to happen to Israel, but he's telling an ancient story because give or take, we're about a, in the run of a thousand years in the time of Hoshiah from when this actually happened with your code. So to tell a future prophecy, he's looking into the past. And that's something you have to know about the Bible and the Hebrews of the Bible. To tell the future, they would look into the past. And uh, uh, and think we live in a time now where people trying to time travel to the future. But an ancient Israelite, the reason why he would look into the past is because he would look into the prophecies passed down through the family to have better understanding of what may be lying before him. Right. So Hoshiah is telling an ancient story to prophesy what's about to happen, the punishment to Israel. This is how you got to this point. We not living up to that. And still today. Considering I believe, and we we th this is predicated on who is Israel, who fits these prophecies, and based off of the the markers that we've been given every week, we not living up to this. As the descendants of this covenant, we not living up to our forefather wrestling with with the Messiah, um, being anointed a prince, being able to make supplication to with the most to the Most High with the Messiah, and being his name being changed to Israel. He didn't change his own name. You see what I'm saying? Like, um, Abba Yah, through the Messiah, named him Israel. Abba Yah gave Israel the nationhood. Abba Yah made Israel who it is. And if we look at it like that, and when we understand our lineage here in captivity and around the world, because we ain't the only ones to try to spread around the world, the Aborigines in Australia, possibly, um, the Samoans in Hawaii, possibly, uh, all through the Caribbean, they got off the transatlantic slave trade. Um, still in Africa, you got the tribes of the Igbo and the Limbo, um, and other tribes. When you when you when you when you weigh it all up, we not living up to this story. <laughs> and that's how crazy, but we not living up to this story because we don't know this story. We don't know we these people. We like Ephraim. We doing what the nations around us doing, looking for acceptance. When you learn who you is. And that's why I'm saying just because you know you're an Israelite and by blood you're an Israelite, that does not guarantee you nothing. We got to live up to this story. We got to live up to a forefather who was able to wrestle with the Messiah. Mind you, at the time of Yaakov, you're talking 17, 1800 years before the Messiah walks the earth. So even though he was in a man's form, as they say, he wrestled with a man. You talking about something that's in his glory, though. Remember, when the Messiah came here, he walked as a man. Other than casting out demons and healing people, he didn't use any power for any physical combat. Any, any, you know what I mean? Like he, like he told Pilate when Pilate was like, "Well, you know, we gonna hang you." Blah 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 blah. He said, 
You only able to do that because my father didn't call you to do that. If I called the angels, you ain't got a chance. But he didn't because that ain't what he came here to do. But when we talk about the day of Yah and him coming back in on this cloud in the end of days, as we see, as crazy as the world is getting, as we read this Bible and we, and we weigh it up against what we see in day-to-day -day life, we getting close. How close? Man, it could be two years. It could be 10 years. Either way, I wouldn't be surprised. It could be anything over 50 years. I'd be shocked, though. I ain't gonna lie. That'd shock me. But on the same token, it ain't easy. It ain't hard to shock me. I'm just a man. <laughs> and y'all said no man knows the day. But just weighing it up on what we see going on, I don't know how the world, and when I say the world, not that it's going to be destroyed, but that the current authority and things that govern this world, I don't know how it lasts another 50 years, is what I'm saying. With that being said, though, we not living up to this story, and we got to live up to this story. Our forefather wrestled with the angel, the Messiah in his glory, was anointed a king, and was able to pray and talk to Yah with him, and that's where his name was changed to Israel. So, And we'll punish Israel, is what this should say, according to his ways, because of what we didn't did. And instead, we're doing what Ephraim's doing, and that's why he's using this prophecy like this, or this story to show even in 2023, y'all still doing what Ephraim was doing. You making covenant with the Assyrians, the Americans, the English, the French, whoever, um, the Nigerian, whoever, the South African, the Chinese, uh, uh, whoever, <laughs> the Australian, whoever. And we need to be making covenant with y'all. Verse six says, therefore, turn thou to thy Elohim. He like, turn back to y'all. We, it's time for us to turn back to y'all. We done tried everything else. We done went to school. Uh, we, we got athletes and actors. It's actually money amongst our people now. I heard a cat say something real, though. With all that money amongst our people, you still don't hear our people talking about. Like, with all of the actors and athletes and all these millions and billionaires now that spring up amongst our people, ain't no way Deion Sanders should have had to lead the HBCUs because it wasn't enough money, which he did it for more than that. But just we don't stick to the money part because he's doing what he wanted to do. Dude never wanted to be at an HBCU. He always wanted to be at one of them big division one schools. He used the HBCU because them, as they call it, PWIs, predominantly white institutions, would not give him a college job, a coach. And he said that he didn't want to be an assistant. So the HBCUs was like, well, you can come be the coach at Jackson. He went down there and did well, as he will. He is a big name in football, maybe the biggest name in football, to be honest with you, right? And he used that to get to where he wanted to. But just keying on the money was part of it. The HBCUs really couldn't afford Deion Sanders. He was making 500000 Colorado come in and give him $5 million. And if he has any bit of a success, he'll only go up the ladder. One day he may be in the NFL making $20 million a year as a coach. Part of why the HBCUs couldn't fund him, though, is because the funding is, is not right. If we really who we is, and this is what y'all mean about these so-called celebrities, these people with money, these billionaires, because everybody, every black person with a billion ain't a celebrity. Let that be known. But why they not funding the HBCUs? All it takes is a little bit of money from all of them, but there's no care in that. Yet when D.I. leave, all of the celebrities got an opinion about it, though. That ain't how I go. And what I'm saying that for is we didn't try everything else. And when y'all letting us know what y'all trying ain't working. I don't know if any of you have ever been familiar with the term food desert. What they call a food desert is a place where there is no supermarkets or no grocery stores. And when you look on the map of the inner cities, typically what they call a food desert is in what we would call the hood. Where I met in Joliet on the east side of Joliet, which is typically considered the hood. When I was growing up in the 90s, you had a jewel on that side. They took that from that side of town in the 90s and made it a church. The Latins bought it. Some Mexicans bought it and made it a church. Why ever jewels left, I don't know. So you had these other grocery stores called Certified. It was two of them. Both of them didn't close. You have, um, you have a big uh, Mexican community on that side of town, too. They have like some a supermercado, like a like a a, a a a a supermarket on that side, but outside of that, there is no uh, grocery stores on that side of town. They call that a food desert. Once again, with all of this money amongst our people now, why we can't pull together and put a grocery store on our side of town 
or a hospital. When you go to a lot of these inner cities where our people at, which is where the hospital should be because we the people getting shot needing the intensive care in the emergency rooms on a more regular basis from that side, right? Yet they move hospitals out. They did it in Joliet. There was a hospital in the hood. They took it, they built a new one further out, which, and when they built it further out, when they made the borders to go to it, it cut off the side of town that needed and pushed them have to go further the other way to the hospital. But that being said, with all this money amongst our people, why we ain't putting hospitals in the hood? You got a lot of billionaires. You look at the NBA and all of that, like you got bums in the NBA sitting on the bench worth two, three hundred million. You get to looking at the stars. These dudes is worth four, five, six hundred million. And you get outside of that, like it is a lot of billions amongst black people right now today. More than it's ever been. It ain't working. <laughs> it ain't working, man. Our people get that little money, throw our name on a charter school, talk about we did something and tell you to go vote. <laughs> And that's the extent of, no, that ain't going to get it out. And that's what y'all saying in chapter 12, verse 6. What y'all done tried ain't working. It's time to turn back to y'all. That's a marker. He says, keep mercy and judgment. Do what's right. I was just talking to my brother last night. No matter what everybody else around me is doing, I'm going to do what's right. Even if it costs me. If somebody say I owe them some money and it's the right thing to do to pay them, even if I ain't got it like that, if they need their money, they need their money. I got to do what I got to do to get them their money. I'm going to do what's right, period, no matter what. Whether it, no matter which way it affects my family, we going to do what's right by y'all first and me and by whoever I have wronged. If I've wronged them, now I ain't just going to go out of my way to appease you either. But if I've really wronged you, we going to do what we got to do to get it together. And typically I'm not because in the beginning, I'm going to do what I got to do to get it together. He said, it's time to get back to doing that. That ain't what we do. We slick, we shysty, we beat each other out of everything, the crab in the barrel mentality. These is markers. He says, and wait on thy Elohim continually. This word continually is important. The word is tamid. It means indefinite extension, perpetual, daily, evermore. Reason why I read say that is because we live in a world now that will tell you, especially the religious, Islam and Christianity will tell you that the Most High took the covenant away from Israel. Right? The so-called people in Israel who follow Judaism, they don't even follow the Most High. Like, they'll keep the feast days, but they don't believe the Messiah has ever lived. You can't, as the scriptures say, you got to worship him. You got to worship him in, 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 in righteousness and truth. What is the truth? They'll never say the Messiah ain't never lived because the Messiah is the one person who gives a description of who he was in the Bible. He had feet, he had skin of polished bass if it burned in the furnace. He's a descendant of King David, which will make him the tribe of Yehuda. The Europeans in Israel say that they are the tribe of Yehuda and they waiting on the other 11 tribes to come back. How are you to, that's why they could never honor the Messiah. Because the books say the Messiah is a dark brown skinned man. How are you the tribe of Yehuda and the Messiah is dark and all of you are Europeans? See, it don't mix up. So they can never honor a Messiah. Because he don't look like them. That's not following Yah. The covenant is forever, as he's what he's saying here. Wait on Yah forever. This is Hoshiah telling them this in 690 BC now. We probably around 690 somewhere in that run. Forever. You are supposed to wait on him. The covenant is forever. It can never be changed. We've been told it been changed. The slave Bible and religion now is really the slave Bible doctrine. We, we broke down the slave Bible last week, how they took out the Old Testament and parts of the new. Now in religion, they give you the whole King James Bible, but the way through these seminaries and to be ordained, these pastors, they teach you how to teach a slave Bible doctrine. So you got the whole book, but they teach a slave Bible doctrine. Still only teach obedience. Everybody going to be saved. The covenant is with the church. Everything going to be okay. That ain't what the Bible says. And that's what we getting back. He says he is a merchant. This word here for merchant, that's a bad translation. The word for merchant is uh, Canaan, Canaan, which is really talking about Canaan, as you see, a trafficker, a merchant, a son of Ham, the Canaanites. Basically, he said the Canaanites, they have the balances of the seed in their hand. He loved to oppress. They keeping the people down. They want to oppress. They destroy the poor. 
Those are things y'all told Israel you can't do. Y'all was so about the poor with Israel. He told Israel, look, when y'all come into this land, he said, when y'all come into this land, and he divvied up the land, y'all told the leaders how to divvy up the land, and you couldn't sell the land. The land was the family's forever. Whatever plot of land y'all gave your family, it was your family's forever. And what he told me is, when y'all get the crops and all of that, and you go to harvest, we couldn't harvest the whole field. So say we had, me and Shelly had a, 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 I don't know, a cornfield, right? We were only to harvest enough corn to get us through the winter in the fall. And he said, you leave the rest so that anybody who poor can come harvest it and it'll get them through the winter. That way, A, you ain't got to worry about nobody asking you for a bunch of nothing, which y'all supposed to love your brother anyway. But B, ain't nobody really poor because even if you poor and you don't take good care of your land, you'll always be able to feed your family. These Canaanites, remember, everything outside of Israel is representing the world. He said they got the balances of the seat in their hand. They love to oppress the poor. They ain't leaving nothing for the needy. What do we see today? These governments don't leave nothing for the poor, yet take our tax dollars and fund their wars, fund all of the country's projects. Think America is the leading nation in the world because it says it has the number one economy in the world, yet they tell you it's a middle class in America. There is no middle class. You either rich or you poor. And it's a lot more poor people than rich. Yet, the, and mind you, rich is like you are 500 million or better. Like most people ain't even really rich. A person to jack a couple million off in a few years with the right habits. That's not really rich. <laughs> man, when they talk about being rich, man, these billionaires own like 90% of America <laughs> and everybody else all like 10%. This nation is poor. The people in this nation is poor. China got 1.2 billion. They poverty rate out of control. Them people poor. Them people poor, man. This world is poor, man. It's a handful of people gone all the wealth in this world. Everybody's poor. That's why we don't, that's why we give y'all all the glory and we don't stress and or we not fighting nobody over no wealth. Because at the end of the day, the people who you know right now who got that get rich or die trying mentality, they in the bag, woo woo. They giving a life to getting rich. They giving a life to be poor still. <laughs> Boy, I tell you the most high is crazy. We live in a crazy world, man. These people spend their whole lives to still die poor. <laughs> Everybody we know on this call gonna die poor unless he hit the lottery for a billion. The likelihood of any of us making a billion is slim. Now the likelihood of us making some millions, it could happen, but you still poor. <laughs> a few million dollars don't really make you rich, not in the grand scheme of things. Now you may be able to do some things with your family, but when you're talking true wealth on a worldwide scale. Man, dog, you got you got some of these billionaires now who will let them report worth two hundred billion. The richest people in the world, Forbes has to ask you to put your wealth in Forbes. They can't just throw up what you worth. The richest people in the world don't even allow Forbes to put them on that list because it'll 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 rattle the world to hear them say one of them Saudi Arabian sultans is worth seven hundred billion. That'll throw the world off to hear them say. One of them Rothschilds who over banking is worth 1.2 trillion. That'd throw the world off to hear that. They would never allow them to put that. The people who you see in Forbes, they allow them to put their wealth in there because it benefits their brand. It benefits Elon Musk for the world to say, well, he worth 200 billion. And then we just seen him. He was throwing his name in there. He's worth that money. For years, people was like, he's such a genius. And then he bought Twitter and lost 40, 50 million in a year playing goofy on Twitter. And now people like, how the hell did he make all that money? Dude's an idiot. <laughs> Dude's an idiot. How did he get all that money? Ah, but when you look into his story, his family was rich. His daddy never had money into them mines over in Africa where they got kids over there. <laughs> get When you look into his story, now it's like, ah, that's how he got rich. He come from a rich family who been oppressing poor people. <laughs> Dude ain't no genius, man. You think about it, he bought Tesla. Dude ain't no scientist, man. He ain't got nothing to do with the building and all that stuff. For years, because he was, and that's what the Forbes list for. 
He was allowing them to put him on that list. I used to hear people, all, I used to say that, like, I invested some Elon Musk. got do got it together. And then he bought Twitter and started talking more. And when he bought Twitter and started talking more, I realized, dude's a plum fool. You know how I know you're a fool? Because as soon as he bought Twitter, he take off on the Democrats, right? You liberals this, you liberals that. I know he a fool because it's liberals that buy electric cars. Republicans want diesel engines and pickup trucks. I know you a fool from that aspect. You jump on Twitter trying to play with the Democrats. You shot your own money. Tesla lose $40 billion in a year. He down a sack playing with Twitter. <laughs> That's a fool. But because the Forbes list was saying he was worth $200 billion, we was like, dude, is such a genius. No, he not. He's an idiot. When it come to money. Nah. Talking about the Canaanites. They used that. <laughs> No, we no, we 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 ain't worshiping no money. Money not even real. When you look at paper money in the world, it's not even real. Money used to be backed by gold. What is money backed by? It's a known fact if you study the Federal Reserve, the history of the Federal Reserve in America. America don't have no gold backing its money. Why is American dollar still the number one currency in the world and ain't no gold backing it? Because of us. I'm talking about Americans who work and pay taxes and have a mentality to go splurge our money on whatever. Money is, that's why I say, the root of all evil is money, man. The worst thing you could do is worship money. Because if you study money, any of you, if you do it, if you take some time to study the history of money and paper money and the American dollar, you will realize that it ain't even worth nothing. It's not even worth nothing. True wealth is land cattle crops that's true wealth tangible that's why they killed Gaddafi Gaddafi was going around Africa telling them nations we need to stop letting these Europeans come beat us out the gold and the diamonds and the oil and everything else in Africa he was going to the African Union telling them leaders we need to start making them pay us in gold and land and cattle and tangible things Man, the African Union turned against Gaddafi. Barack Obama, who's a, supposedly an African, his brother, he taught Gaddafi into coming off his nukes. And as soon as Gaddafi did it, the French went into Libya and destroyed it. Libya's been a wasteland ever since. That's history. That's history you can look up. That's documented. Money. Money is deceitful. And y'all said, the Canaanites, the merchants, the traffickers, they balance and defeat, deceit. They love the to oppress the poor. That's how they got rich. That's how all the governments in the world get rich off the backs of the poor. The working class, as they say. <laughs> Real talk. In America, you'll hear people in politics say, well, we doing this for the working class. We doing this for the working class. And the same token, they'll turn around and COVID hit. They'll throw pennies at the working class and bail out the banks. No, nah, you're not doing it for no work. And that's on both sides. That's just how it go. That's government. No. Y'all like, nah, don't be them. He telling Ephraim, don't be like that. Ephraim then got like that. I told you, leave the crops for the poor. Make sure everybody eat. Y'all that, and we seen that in Judges. Remember Gilead, was it? No, Gideon told Ephraim that. Gideon was like, when he went in and freed God's people, Ephraim came out the mountain and was like, why you ain't come get us to help fight? Gideon said, man, the, the, uh, uh, the Ishmaelites was down here starving us. Y'all didn't even come out the mountains and help feed us. Now you want some glory? Because Ephraim acting like the world. Because we act like the world today. We not living up to your cold wrestling with Yah. We not living up to that. And Ephraim said, yet I, be I have become rich. I have found me out substance. See, Ephraim then got the ball and in the mountains. See, the way Ephraim set up in the... Where, when the plots of Israel broke down, Ephraim is a mountainous region. And we see that in Judges because it talks about them coming out of the mountains. They harder to conquer, I should say. Even those Ephraimites on the bottom of this mountain who have been conquered and in servitude, right? He like, I done become rich. I got substance. He like, I got substance. I ain't doing none of that. Excuse <laughs> me. He like, I'm not doing none of that. I have found me out substance. And all my labors, they shall find none of iniquity in me that we're seeing. He like, no, nah, money done puffed him up. 
And y'all, and remember y'all said earlier, you're going to go into bondage with all your richness. Same thing we is now. Y'all like, man, y'all got all them athletes. Y'all starting all them businesses. Y'all going to college and you still in captivity. You can't buy freedom. <laughs> See, but most, I don't make no mistakes, man, when he say these things. As much as we didn't came up here in America, we came by freedom. No, that ain't going to happen. Verse 9, and I, the Most High Yah, from the land of Egypt, and, and I believe I read this in the Septuagint because it says from the land of Egypt, but he really meant in the Septuagint, it said, who led you out of Egypt, will yet make thee dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feast. With all of that foolishness that they had going on then, and he freed them, that you got going on now, it's going to be me who's going to come give you freedom, put you back in your tabernacles your rightful land, your rightful home, the tent, your home. I'm the one going to bring you home. That's the only way. We got here in 1619. They say as a nation, we've never been back to Africa, let alone uh, Israel. We can't even get back to the shores of Africa, <laughs> let alone Israel. Mind you, Africa doesn't mean nothing. It's just a continent. It's not a nation. Verse 10, I have also spoken by the prophets every time. Y'all like every time. Every time I come let you know what it is by these prophets. I have spoken by these prophets. We done read a few now. In the timeline, we done had Jonah. We done had Joel. We done had Amos. We done had Hoshiah. Understand, it's been other prophets than that that's just not in the book. It's other prophets other than that. Elijah has already lived at this time whose name is uh, Eliahu. I'm sure you, almost everybody been heard the story of Elijah because he was possibly the most powerful prophet, one of, considered to be, right? It's been prophets, but there's other prophets who ain't made the book. There's a prophet named Gad. It was a prophet named Nathan who told King David, you bogus for taking that woman like that. What we got in the Bible, what we call prophets, ain't every prophet. Plus, you got prophets like Abraham was a prophet. Moses was a prophet. Y'all like, I don't have prophets tell you. I'd have prophets tell y'all what time it is, just like today. All of you all are prophets, because y'all done opened up this word to you. He done showed you what it do. He done multiplied your visions. Everybody out here done had a vision, a dream. Y'all like I done showed y'all. And you similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Similitudes. I think I have this. This word here for similitudes is dama, dama. To resemble, like it. I didn't use things to show you. I didn't compare things to you. Like when I say I'm a roaring lion. You know why he tells us he's a roaring lion? Because he knew, knowing the end from the beginning, they gonna change things in the world. So I'm gonna tell him I'm a roaring lion because even in 2023, they gonna know what a roaring lion mean. It mean you about to die <laughs> if you ain't on the other side of a gate or something from it. That's what it means. I'm going to use the sun and the moon because all the way up until the end, before I darken the sun and the moon, they're going to know what it means to see the sun. So when y'all say, uh, I'm going to burn you like the the the, the sun over the morning dew, you know what that means when you wake up and see that morning dew on the grass and then by afternoon, it's just hot. The dew gone. It'll just disappear too. All you know is you looked up and you was making your tea, hopefully. I, I mean, I'm sure you're some coffee drinkers out here know how y'all be. But... That's what he's saying. You got up and you made your tea and your coffee. You was looking out the window in the morning before you went to work and you saw the dew. And then by the time you got in your car, it felt like it drove to work. When you got back out the car, the dew was gone. It was just hot. That's why he used that. Because you'll always know what that means. Y'all was like, I didn't use that through the prophets to let you know you out of order. <laughs> Verse 11. Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely, Gilead is a part of Manasseh. It's a northern tribe. It's Ephraim's brother, actually. Ephraim and Manasseh are Joseph's two children. Yah told Joseph when he died, who was the prince in Egypt, he said, you've already reigned as a king in Egypt. I'm not going to give you a plot of land, but I'm going to give your two sons plots of land, Ephraim and Manasseh, which goes against this doctrine. No, no heathen can get in the kingdom because Ephraim and Manasseh, mama was Egyptian. They would be mixed. They wouldn't even be what you call a full Israelite. They would be mixed. 
yet Yah thought high enough of him to give him a, a, a plot of land and a tribe. And the reason why I still made 12 is because he told Joseph, I'm going to get your two kids. And then Le the Levites, the Levitical priests, they didn't get a plot of land because y'all said your plot is to do my work. I'm your inheritance. So they had a plot of land within all plots of land, which was set aside for the work of the Levites to do the work of y'all. That, those were the two that dropped out to make room for Ephraim and Manasseh. So he said, surely they are vanity. Gilead. Gilead the been bogus. Remember, Gilead, you had a uh, uh, judges who came out of Gilead and judges who was righteous. He like, no, nah, they filed though. Gilead filed too. They sacrificed bullocks in Gilgal. That's where they done put this fake temple in the north. Yeah, their archers are as heaps in the furrows of the field. He like, no, nah, they filed too. Verse 12, and Jacob fled into the country of Syria. Jacob did what? Jacob fled Israel and served for a wife. And for a wife, he kept sheep. He talking about Israel like, this is what your forefather did. He had to flee from Esau to Haran, I think is where Laban was, or Laban. And Israel served for a wife. He had to serve for Rachel. He got tricked into Leah. He got served, he had to serve for Rachel though. And for wife, he kept sheep. He's still using this analogy of, and what he's trying to tell him is, y'all not living up to what Jacob had to go through for you to be here. We today not living up to what Jacob had to do for us to be here. Still. But all of you that's on here, you starting to live up to it. That's why you here. Y'all done put it on your heart. You got to make some changes. It's time to do some things different. Verse 13, it said, and by a prophet, the Most High brought Israel out of Egypt. Who? Moshe. He was a prophet. I've been using prophets. That's what he's just trying to tell them. Look, Hoshe ain't the first prophet. I gave you Moshe who brought you out of Egypt, who brought you out of bondage. And by a prophet, was he preserved? The word here for preserved. He was guarded. He was protected. He was hedged with the hedge of Yah, protected by angels. Moshe definitely was. I've been gave you prophets. And when you read Deuteronomy and Numbers and all that, Moshe was telling them. Now, when you get to Hosea, Moshe about, if Jacob about a thousand years, Moshe about 800 years, eight, seven, 800 years before this prophecy we read in Hosea was Moshe. Yeah, because Moshe was 430 years before the King David. And we about two, 300 years from King David. So really about somewhere between six to 800 years between this and Moshe. And when you read Deuteronomy, which is a book they say Moshe wrote, when you read Numbers and Leviticus and uh, Exodus, which is the book Moshe wrote, Moshe was telling Israel, then if your people go in that land acting like that, they coming back into Egypt. <laughs> That's why y'all, he's saying that to say, I ain't the first person y'all sent up here to tell us this. Remember, Moshe like, you feel me? To use a sports analogy, Moshe like Michael Jordan <laughs> to an Israelite back then. You speaking of Moshe, everybody know who he is. Everybody know. Frederick Douglass or one of them. So one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them, of them descendants of slaves that everybody know of our people. Moshe that. So when he bring Moshe up, it's like, yeah, we all know the story of Moshe. If we, if your granny ain't teach you nothing coming up, you knew the story of Moshe. And it's still like that today. You think about it. Most of us growing up, I speak for myself. I didn't know no much about no Bible. I knew the story of Moshe bringing the people out of Egypt, though, as a child. Still today, Moshe is one of the most taught stories in the world. I go out on the limb and say, Moshe bringing his people out of Egypt is second only to the story about the Messiah. Because everybody in the world that heard that story, whether you believe it or not, is your business. I mean, they got a holiday behind it. They call it Christmas. It's supposed to be around it, but it's really to get you to go spend all your money and wait for um, some European in a red suit with a beard to come down your chimney. Can you imagine if you woke up one day and Santa Claus was in your living room, man? Santa Claus would be getting shot all over the world. <laughs> man, if Santa Claus was really sliding down chimneys, dude would be taking bullets all over the world. Man, who's this in my living room? Nah, Moshe been told you is what he said. Verse 14. 
Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. This one particular tribe in the north he keying on because they didn't become the most cocky. And when you read, if you go back and read Judges, they bid that. This ain't new. See what happens, even with us today. Nothing we do today, nothing that will happen to us today is based off the decisions we made today. Everything that happened to us today is based off the decisions we'd have made in our entire lives, which led us to this moment. Like with all of you, you ain't, you ain't, you might not have been into the Bible, but it's things in your life that have always stood out to you, made you question things, made you wonder things. That's what got you here today. And that been y'all talking to you even before you knew y'all could talk to you. He from Ben Fowl is what he's saying. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him and his reproach shall his Elohim return unto him. You reap what you sow. Yah's standing on that. Ephraim, I've been giving you a chance to repent. I've been telling you what to do. You want to do it your way? That's cool. But I have to respond in kind. I have to respond in kind to what you did. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments on Hoshia chapter 12 before we move on? Anything anybody want to add? Before we move on, hallelujah. I think that's the theme of today. Y'all's like, y'all ain't living up to what your ancestors done did. We ain't living up to what you call. We ain't living up to you call wrestling, y'all. Real talk. We ain't living up to it. He had the power over the angel and prevailed. He was crowned with this angel. He wept and made supplication with Hamashiach, who was found. They was in Bethel, the house of Elohim, and there they spoke with us. Who? With Yahuwah, the Elohim of hosts. We ain't living up to an ancestor who had that type of authority. Hallelujah. That's the theme of the day. We got to go live up to that. I know some of y'all are trying. No, I ain't going to shortstop y'all. Hallelujah. We all try. Hallelujah. And, we, and that's why we pray that y'all continue to have mercy and patience with us as, you know, we relearn some things. But when you relearn, you got to apply. And y'all still be merciful with you relearning. Okay, you still fall, you still fall, you still fall. But eventually you got to stand on something. Eventually you got to stand on something. That's something That's something the religion threw us off with. In Jesus' name, you could just continue to fall. And No, eventually we got to stand on something. Eventually we got to stand on something. That's the only way that's going to go. Hoshiah chapter 13. Verse one, he picked right back up. When Ephraim spake trembling, <laughs> y'all, Ephraim here, like, dog, this one particular tribe, all of y'all followed. That's why he keeps saying Yehuda, you too. He let it know. All of y'all out of order. But this one particular tribe, Ephraim, you wilder for real, though. <laughs> he said, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. Ephraim got so big, he got to exalt himself. Mind you, he worshiping other gods. He got a temple that Jeroboam had made. I think Jeroboam was from the tribe of Ephraim too. Yahushua, was Jeroboam from Ephraim? What tribe was he from? I know you spoke about him earlier. Do you know? I, I believe I believe you you are right. I think he is from Ephraim. I can I can check that for you though. Let me know. Jeroboam is the first when the kingdom split into two nations. Jeroboam was the first king of the northern tribes of Israel, and I believe he was from Ephraim too. Crazy thing about him, Jeroboam was chosen by Yado to be the kings of the northern tribe. Yah didn't tell him to start going to worship other gods, though. <laughs> he ain't tell him that. He was like, look, you've been chosen, man. Go, go, go. Solomon the fell off. His son picking up where he left off. I'm going to split this up. I'm going to give you a tribe. Go do right by it. He was like, I'm going to do what I want. Go ahead, Yahushua. Yeah, th that's what it is. Uh, it's tribe of uh, he's from the tribe of Ephraim. Okay, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. hallelujah. Yeah. So and that, and this is what oh my fault I I tried to lower your hand I but uh this is why um this is playing into why y'all so focused on Ephraim because I done brought Jeroboam out of there. He exalted himself, start building altars and all this other stuff. Built his own temples. Y'all stop coming to Jerusalem for the feast like I commanded you. It says, but when he when he offended in Baal, he died. The word he offended is when he, when he um, let's see, when he was found guilty in Baal, when he got to worship in these other gods, he died. He 
I, I was giving him chances. But when he went too far, I had, to, I had to destroy him. He was found guilty. Same as us today. And that's why Yah is merciful, but we got to take a stand one day. We got to take a stand. Don't let nobody tell you ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, ain't nobody perfect by the ways of this world. We need to be trying to be perfect by the word of Yah. Now, how close we get, that's up for debate. That's between us and Yah. But that's got to be the mission. We searching for, for the perfection of Yah to walk in the likeness of image. You can't do that in you in in your in, in, in your not you gotta you gotta take a stand. It may go against everything you've ever known in your life, but you gotta take a stand. Verse two, and now they seeing more and more. He like, okay. <laughs> Y'all like, okay. They have made them molten images of their silver and idols. All that wealth they got, they using it to what? Worship other gods. All this wealth we didn't got now over here, what we doing? We using it to worship other gods. Ain't nothing new under the sun. That's a marker. You hear some people say, well, you know, these European Ashkenazis, they got all this wealth. Woo, woo. They ain't using it to run around and worship no other gods. They worshiping what they believe. They wrong. Don't get it twisted. They wrong. <laughs> but... They ain't using it, but see, this is, and, and you know what? I take that back because this is another marker. And I heard I say this earlier. They got all that, all this wealth. They own bank and they own Hollywood. They can allow all they want. They own these sports. They can allow all they want. They can allow all they want. That, we, that Once again, if we, if you looked at the history of money, the history of money will tell you where the money at. It's, 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 it's on paper. <laughs> they just lie when they see you in your face. Oh, we don't really look at the history of money. It's on paper. What they do is they let all the gods and all that worship in what they call the holy land. King David wouldn't allow that. I think when we read about the kings that were righteous in Judah, they would go through and tear down all the altars of the other gods. Not over there today. Why? Because they not it, they don't value the covenant because it's not theirs. So they have built churches over there where Jesus supposedly ascended into heaven, which is a lie. The Bible say that the Messiah was crucified on Golgotha which is the mountain that was shaped like the head of a skull. That mountain's still in Israel. But if you go over there, they got a church that they done built so many miles away talking about this is where he was crucified at. That's a lie. And they allow that. So I take that back. They do use their silver and gold. I won't say that they build idols, but they allowing that idol worship to go on because they not the people. They don't value the covenant. They value the perks in a Christian Catholic world of saying, we the people of the Bible. See, it's a perk come with that. And y'all allows that perk because the true people, we not living up to the image of your code, wrestling with this man. And we know God ain't never no man. Who we call y'all ain't never nobody's man. So who is this man? See, they won't address that either because once again, to address that man, you have to address the existence of a Messiah and let them tell it he ain't never been here. <laughs> he ain't never came. They waiting on him. A couple years ago, they was like the Messiah here. And it was some European who was wearing glasses. Man, I seen people online roast, dude. Like, what kind of Messiah you got need to wear glasses? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that tickled me. Like, that's crazy, boy. As they say, the internet is undefeated. What kind of Messiah is supposed to be this perfect being that he got to put in contacts, man? If you don't go, man. <laughs> He says, and now they see it more and more and have made molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding and all of it, the work of craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calf. Remember, the calf is like the golden calf in the wilderness. This is the representation of a God. This is the rep. You got to come kiss their God. He said, they say to them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calf. You got to come worship our God. We ain't going to Jerusalem. We ain't sacrificing nothing to Yah. We sacrifice it to the God of these Assyrians. And Yah just told them, when the Assyrians, when I send the Assyrian dude, he ain't going to say, when you worship like us, that's what's up. We rock it. He going to say, we don't care because you worship like us. Give us all your money and come build our houses. <laughs> Same thing he do today. When these so-called uh, uh, African-American churches go against the thing. No. These people stand against them. We don't care what them churches talking about. You don't get no points for that. Martin Luther King is a prime example of that. He was a big Christian pastor. 
them white evangelicals in the South didn't care nothing about him being no pastor. They was like, this nigga better go. <laughs> Period. <laughs> they was like, this Negro better go, man. We don't care nothing about him talking about no Jesus. He better go. <laughs> I tell you, boy, y'all, it, it, that's a marker, man. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud. And as the early dew that pass away, see, this is what he mean by the similitudes. The morning cloud, when you wake up, you'll wake up, it'll be cloudy by the time of the afternoon, the sun will be out bright. The early dew pass away as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. They're going to pass away. Everybody doing this is going to pass away. <laughs> Y'all saying. It ain't going to last forever. You got to go. No, like the smoke out of a chimney thing. When the smoke come out the chimney, you see it for like a millisecond and then you don't even know where it went. That's what y'all saying. Y'all saying that. I ain't letting it ride. He said, yet I am the most high Yah who brought you out of the land of Egypt and thou shalt know no Elohim or no El. They go to the word El again. See, I means God. Oh, he used Elohim here, which means gods in the ordinary sense. It could mean in a plural. But when you hear Elohim, it also means the supreme Elohim, the most high, right? He says, they shall, they shall know no Elohim but me, for there is no savior, savior beside me. Ain't nobody coming to save you outside of what I'm telling you, is what he said. And remember, we saw this word earlier, Yeshia, deliverer. This means the same as the person who wrote this book, the prophet, Hoshia, Yaset the deliverer in the name of a prophet, to tell them if you repent, you could turn back, but they didn't want to repent. But what he's telling them here, that's the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods but me. I'm a jealous Elohim. He just went back and said, basically with hope, and see, once I, I always say this, man. Once I realized who these people was, I started to hear them speak. When I read this Bible, I hear them speaking in my mind. And what he just told them right there is, y'all broke the first commandment. We ain't know nothing. <laughs> we couldn't even get the commandment 10. We broke y'all up here breaking the first one. Like, as we say, we didn't even pass go. <laughs> we broke the first one. What do we do today? We break the first one. You know how I know? Because almost every African-American descendant of a slave in this country know that Christianity was given to him by European and other nations who was oppressing us and they used it to tell us slavery was okay. We know the history of them using what they called the house Negro because we couldn't read and write English. They taught the house Negroes to read and write English and told him to come to the field Negroes and teach them about a European Messiah named Jesus Christ. That's another history. That could be studied. So-called black historians know that. And they still go to church every Sunday to tell you in Jesus' name. That's why they're able to do that. And y'all, like, you you ain't even paying no attention. You breaking commandment number one, doing something that you know was given to you with malicious intent. That's what they call colonization. They know that the colonials and these evangelicals went all around the world doing that. Asia, they was in Japan. They was in China. They was in India. They was in Africa. They was in the Middle East. That's when you hear all these people talking about some, but the colonizer. That's what the colonizer did. He came and brought you Jesus. Yet everybody cool with bowing to it. Nah. And y'all telling them right here, you file and you know you file. You done broke the first commandment and you didn't even care. There is no savior beside me. The only person going to save you is who I'm sending. I sent the judges. I sent Moshe. And I told Moshe to sell you one day I'm gonna send a prophet and, and who's that and who's and who's who's gonna speak the words for me. I'm gonna send a prophet. That's prophesied. The Messiah been prophesied. Adam said way in the beginning. Y'all gonna send, y'all said he's gonna come here and dwell amongst us. Adam knew that. Seth knew that. Enoch knew that. Noah knew that. That wasn't even a new thing. Abraham knew that. Jacob knew that. Isaac knew that. All the 12 sons knew that. All of these people, Hoshiah, know that. But you up there worshiping Buddy now. You wilder. And that's what he's telling them. We wild. Y'all up here wilding. You done broke commandment number one. You couldn't even get past the first one. We are foul because we not living up to what Yacob say. We not living up to Yacob wrestling that angel. Still today. 
Verse five, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. It was hectic in the wilderness. Wasn't no water, wasn't no nothing. He said, I was with you in the wilderness. I read the whole long. Oh, yeah. And this verse four in the Septuagint read a little different. I, I, I liked it this because it put a little bit more respect on Yah's name. It says, but I am the most high Yah that establishes the heaven and creates the earth whose hands have framed the whole host of heaven. See, they put some respect on his name. I'm the one did all that, and you and you kissing calves. <laughs> but I showed them not to thee that thou shouldest go after them, and brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no Elohim but me, and there is no Savior beside me. The only one, only Savior is the one I'm sending. The only Savior is the one I'm sending. He said, I was with you in the wilderness. Excuse me. In the land of great drought. According to your pasture, so were they filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, have they forgot me. You didn't have no water or nothing. I blessed you with everything in the wilderness. I'd have blessed you with everything since you came in this land and you'd have forgot me. Same as we do today. Y'all bless us. We don't give him none of the glory. We get to talk about Mother Nature. <laughs> Science. Real talk. Doctor, come here and tell you, you got six months to live, but we got this new miracle drug. It might help. We take the drug and we talk about the doctor saying, me. no, y'all spared you. We done forgot him. The world done forgot him, but he talking to his people. Because <clears throat> it wasn't the world's job to show the world who he was. It was his people's job. That's part of the covenant. That's the job description. You, go, you got to go be the light unto the Gentiles. What that mean? You got to go show the people what it means to follow me. That's the job. That's the first job of an Israelite. Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion, as a leper. By the way, I will observe them. See, he using them animals. That's the similitude, right? The similitude. He using the animals because you know a lion in the way, if you see him, that means you're in trouble. <laughs> if you out in the field and you see a lion stalking you down, there's a good chance you're about to die. You can't outrun it and you can't outfight it. Not with your hands. Well, I take that back because some of our ancestors was fighting lions with their hands. I don't know nobody who's doing that today, though. He says, I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. I will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. Y'all like, look, you can be foul all you want. I'm attacking all sinners just like an, a wild animal, if you saw one. See, that's why he using them animals because... Everybody know, if you out somewhere camping and you see a bear, you better run. <laughs> you better get to some safety. And y'all like, nah, you ain't going to be able to run from me. That's how I'm coming. Oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Oh, Israel. Oh, African-American, you done destroyed yourself. How? You got to thinking you was an American. In a land that has told you for 400 years, you are not one of us. They was more blatant 100 years ago. 100 years ago, you was three-fifths of a man. They, they was letting you know you're not one of us. It ain't got more crafty. Now, yeah, you can work. You can do this. When you hear with this election, I say this a lot. When you be hearing with this election, we want to count all of the real votes. What the Republicans is telling you is that these black and these brown people votes shouldn't count. Only white folks' votes should count. That's what they tell you in the South. That's why they're changing the laws in Georgia, in Texas, uh, trying to change them in Arizona. That's why they're doing that. They're trying to tell you that these black and brown people, and what they're really telling you is, is you're not an American. We is. You should just be happy to be here. The one girl said the other day, we should split up the red and the blue states, and if anybody from a blue state moved to a red state, they shouldn't be able to vote for five years. <laughs> <laughs> what he telling you is you black folks don't deserve to be able to move back to the South that you built. You shouldn't be able to vote. Don't bring that up north mumbo jumbo down here. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. And, and you know why they say that? Because all these black folks from Chicago and New York and all these other spots moving to Atlanta to turn Georgia blue. They like the black folks vote shouldn't count. They ain't from Georgia. There's a bunch of New Yorkers and Chicagoans. I only say them because I know it's a bunch of people from New York. And I know a whole bunch of people from Chicago who didn't move to Atlanta. Some people up here call Atlanta Chicago South. <laughs> when you see the Falcons play the Bears, half the stadium be Bears fans. Think about it when you see them next time. 
because it's a lot of Chicago in Atlanta. And they didn't help turn that state blue. And them rural farmers is like, these people done stole our state. Texas the same way. When you hear them people celebrate, all of the judges in Texas is black women. They like, man, these people trying to steal our state. Texas next. They fighting it in Texas right now. And with all that being said, that's what the destroyed you. Because you done thought you done made it like you some American. Y'all like, I'm your only help. And that's what we know in here today. Y'all is all of our only help. That's what we know in here today. Y'all is our only help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? Y'all like only me. And thy judges of whom thou said, give me a king and a prince. I gave you judges. You wanted a king. I was your king. Y'all like, I'm your king. I've always been your king. But I, in my mercy, I gave thee a king. Verse 11, in my anger, I gave you a king and I took him away in my wrath. Who? Saul, I gave you a king. He fell short. I took him away in my wrath. But before I gave you that king, being merciful, I told you through the prophets, you don't need a king. You got Yah. But if that's what my people want, I'm going to give you. And look at you now. From wanting them kings now, the kings in the north got you worshiping and kissing calves. And, and now you finna go into slavery, following your king that you wanted. I gave you a king. Now you finna go into slavery, following your king, when you should have just honored me as king. And you'll be doing a lot better. But we didn't honor him as king. Why? Because we not living up to your cold wrestling that man. Your cold wrestled with the king and was anointed a prince and said he prevailed, he endured. Nah, that's what it do. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is heaven. Ephraim out here bad. He trying to hide his sin. He think he's slick. Nah, you not. I see you. <laughs> In so many words, y'all like, I see you. In the Septuagint, this verse 12 says, Ephraim has framed a conspiracy of unrighteousness. That's how far we is. You think you slick. It's a conspiracy. We trying to throw rocks and hide our hands. You feel me? Don't nobody understand the tax code. Let's just change the tax code to get a billionaires a break and tax the poor some more. Don't nobody understand it anyway. That's a conspiracy of unrighteousness. His sin is hidden. Nah, y'all like, I see you. Y'all like, I see you. He says, pains as of a woman in travail shall come upon him. He is thy wise son because he shall not stay in destruction of thy children. Pains of a woman in travail, somebody pregnant, about to have birth. Y'all see, everybody out here, I think, not saying what that looked like. It's not the easiest thing. It's tough. He like, you gonna have that same type of pain as a woman in travail. But you ain't no fool. Eventually, you gonna come back. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to get your mind back right, though. He like, eventually, you're going to get your mind back right. You ain't no fool. One of these days. And that's what's going on in here right now. We getting our mind back right. We going out. We trying to speak it to our families, telling our grannies, telling our children. We trying to help our families. If nothing else, we start with our household. We trying to get our households in order. If y'all bless you to do that, then you move out from there. Whoever want to hear, we ain't forcing nobody to hear. I'm not forcing nobody to hear the truth about y'all. But if you come to me and you ask, we can have a conversation. But me and you can have just a regular conversation, even if you say you don't want to hear that. Cool. How your kids? How your mama? Okay, that's what's up. I'm not forcing no conversation about y'all or nobody. But if that's what, if you want to hear that, then we going to step through the door. We ain't forcing y'all or nobody. Mm -mm. Verse 14. <clears throat> that I have here. I'm going to stay in the Septuagint to end there. He say, I will deliver them out of the power of Hades. Remember here it said, over here it says the grave. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this in the KJV. I'll just break it down. He says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. The word here for grave is Sheol, as you see, Hades, or the world of the dead. He actually says something important here. I will redeem them from death. The word here for death, ma vet, death, the dead, their place or state, Hades, pestilence, ruin, death, die. I will be thy plagues, O grave. Y'all like, 
Yah saying, I'm going to be the plagues unto the grave. I'm going to destroy the grave, is what he said. I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. He ain't talking about the people dead. So in, the, in Revelations, it tells us that on one of the horses, it says death and hell was riding on the horse. When you see gray, Sheol, or Hades, as they call it, I think that's Greek though, but when you see Sheol and death being my veth, it's not just talking about the place. Yah is talking about the entities that's over the grave, that's over death, because Yah has given them that. Now, mind you, Hosea is prophesying that. When the Messiah come, what did he do? Death had been destroyed. He had took the keys from, from Sheol back for Yah. They got that authority took from them. So when you see in Revelation, on the, I think it's on the certain horse, death and hell is riding in. And he is letting us know there is demonic angels at this time that was over that function. Maybe not even demonic. Y'all might have had angels from heaven over that function. There was some angels that oversee even what we would call the devil and all of that over that function. What Yah said is, I'm going to take the authority from them. And we know that when the Messiah died, he said he got the victory. He took the authority. That's why now if you live back then, when you back then when he went down there, when you read the, the, the heroine of hell and, and the super gospel, which is stories they took out the Bible, Adam. And Abraham and all those people were waiting in hell. They weren't being tortured, though. It talked about how everybody around them was being tortured. But the righteous still had to go wait in hell. After the Messiah did that, now you got Paul, 2 Corinthians, I think, chapter 12. He the first or second Corinthians said he having visions. He's going to the third level of heaven. And there was paradise. And the dead is waiting there now. That's the victory. The righteous did. If you ain't righteous, you still got to go wait in darkness. And be tortured. This really was a prophecy of the Messiah. This verse 14. Hallelujah. See what I'm saying? And this is why we read these prophecies. To show that once we get to Revelation. When it talks about this victory. John ain't just writing that. No he's quoting. Hoshiah. He's quoting prophets. And he's he's been given prophecy as well. Don't get it twisted. But he's quoting prophets. Verse 15. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of Yahuwah, there go Ruah. Though he be fruitful amongst his brethren, though he be fruitful amongst his brethren, I'm going to read this in the Septuagint, verse 15 says, For as much as he will cause a division among his brethren, the Most High shall bring upon him an east wind or an ancient Ruah from the desert. And shall dry up his veins and quite drain his fountains. He shall dry up his land and spoil all his precious vessels. And as you see over here in the KJV, it says the wind of Yah. Talking about the Ruach of Yah, what we would call the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Yah, the Ruach HaKodesh, the set-apart spirit is going to come from the wilderness. The word for wilderness can mean desert as well. And his spring shall come. Matter of fact, let me bring up the word for wilderness. As you see, the word for wilderness can mean desert as well. Um, I didn't bring up the word for wilderness. Here we go, right here. Desert. I already had. I didn't even highlight that. I don't know what it's been, but the word is midbar. It means desert. Y'all said the Ruach Hakodesh is going to come. His spring shall become dry. His fountain shall be dried up. Y'all like I'm gonna take that. He shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Y'all telling him. Because of the way you plan, because you still, even in chapter 13, you still not living up to Jacob's name being given to him, Israel, by this man, which is the Messiah. You're not living up to Jacob wrestling Yah. That's what this, these last few chapters, that's what it's all about. We weren't living up to it then, we ain't living up to it now. Verse 16, Samaria shall become desolate. For she hath rebelled against her Elohim. Samaria is the capital of the northern tribes. I would consider it that. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. And their women with child shall be ripped up. It's going to be ugly. Y'all like it's going to be ugly when they go. And it was like that when, 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 when Judah left. Same thing. The Babylonians did the same. And when we came into the transatlantic slave trade. Same thing. The kids was gator bait. Same thing. That's a marker. 
Hallelujah. Any comments about chapter 13? We're going to try to get 14 in. 14, nine verses. We're going to knock that out before we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Right, let, me, let me bring that up. I like this read. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4, so you all understand what I'm saying. Shaul was like, as you see, the, the Septuagint on this side is blank now because we in the New Testament and the Septuagint was supposedly wrote 200 BC. It was before the New Testament was written. But <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Most High Yah. I knew a man in Mashiach I knew a man who followed the Messiah, a boy 14 years ago. Whether in body, I cannot tell, or whether out of body, I cannot tell. Only y'all know. The vision, this dream was so strong. It was one of them, you know how sometimes you wake up from a dream and you was like, man, that felt real. I had a dream last night that felt real and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but I'm sure everybody done been through that. That's a similar to. See, that's something that ain't never changed. Then and now, people have dreams and wake up and be like, man, that dream felt so real. That's what he said, man. It, it, but see, he, him being a more understanding the power of Yah much better than most of us. All of us probably is Shaul, right? He know. Now, I don't know if Yah actually really called me there or was it wasn't just a vision. That's what he's saying. But whatever it was felt so real, right? Such an one caught up to the third heaven. I was brought to the third heaven in this vision dream. Whether I spiritually was took there for real. Paul said I was brought to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in body or out of body. I cannot tell it. He said again, look, it was so real in the third heaven. I don't even know if I was really there. <laughs> Verse four, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. And there's a book called the Apocalypse of Paul where he details this vision. That same book, Apocalypse of Paul, if you look at, I believe the, the Pope's name was Galatian, G-E-L-S-I-A-N. I'm not going to bring it up today. But that Pope, and see what I'm saying about the history, that Pope named a bunch of books of the New Testament, the Apocalypse of Paul, other books from Peter. Uh, uh, it was a couple books out the New Testament that he said should not be part of what we call the Bible did because he felt like they were not inspired. Now, First off, Yah said, don't add or take, don't add to or take from the word. That's what he told Israel, who's supposed to be the light bearer. Second off, if he told Israel that a European for damn show sure shouldn't be doing that. See the problem with that? That's why we don't allow nobody to tell us that without reading. But this is where the victory was. Remember, Paul's having this vision after the Messiah has died and took the keys back from who Yah was allowing to run what we call the place of rest hell no we go to the third heaven now if you die in righteousness any questions or comments about this Osiah before we move on I know I'm kind of moving around but we're making decent time I'm trying to get this done hallelujah hallelujah <clears throat> nine verses we gonna go knock it out but anybody like to read the nine verses? Nobody can I can read, read for I can read for you. I, or if that was Lawrence, she can read. It's fine. Whoever want to read, it don't matter. You want to read or you want me to read? No, nah, no, nah, you got it. No, nah, you got it. Sis. you got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Laura, okay. Read. okay. Laura, you can read. I've been reading all day. <laughs> okay, okay. O oh, Israel, return unto Yah thy Elohim, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Take with your words and turn to Yahuwah. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us grace, gracefully. So will we render the calves of our lips. Assure, Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backslidings. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. 
They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of Yah are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. Hallelujah. Thanks for reading that. And Can I say one thing? What that last verse is? Uh, funny. Yeah. I quoted that verse this morning, but the other verse to go to it when he says, a righteous man will fall seven times. And uh, me and my cousin had a study on that. That was funny. So a righteous man will fall seven times and keep rising. But a wicked person, they would just fall into more mischief. Hallelujah. hallelujah. No, hallelujah. And as we see in this last verse, Yah's telling them, although you not living up to your ancestor, wrestling with, with my son, really. And because he can't really prevail, but I gave him enough power to not be killed <laughs> by Yahushua wrestling with him. Is really what he's saying. And you not living up to that magnificent event where he got the name Israel. What he's telling us right here is you that fell in iniquity, I'm gonna take it away. You got a chance. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna kiss the calf no more. You ain't gonna serve them gods no more. You're gonna realize that Asher, which is the Assyrians, he can't save you, nor by your own power, riding on horses and 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 I'd have made you bigger, faster, stronger. You smarter. You got all these things. You the most, you, you the best at surviving. All that. I did that. And that's not what's going to save you. Neither will you say to the work of your hands, these guys that you done created, these crosses, these idols, these onks, all this other weirdness that you done got to uh, messing with, these crystals ain't going to heal you. You ain't manifesting nothing. Because you fatherless, you'd have lost your father, you'd have forgot your maker, as it said earlier in this book. But that's why I said I'm here for the fatherless and the needy. We all fatherless in the spiritual sense. We have been. And y'all like, I'm going to have mercy. That's why I'm going to have mercy on the fatherless. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to heal the backside. I'm going to forgive you for what you did. But you got to want that. You got to seek that. You can't just continue to, you got to stand on something one day. You got to stand on something. I'm going to turn away my anger. He said, I'm going to be like the do unto Israel. That means I'm going to cover you everywhere. You're going to grow. You're going to have big, you're going to be firmly rooted in me. You're going to have the beauty of the olive tree. Remember, the olive tree is representation of Israel, but not only that, you get the oil for the anointing of the priest, which is representation of Yah anointing your physical body and then giving you your spiritual heavenly body. That's what he's trying to say with that. I'm going to give you that. They that dwell under the shadow, under his shadow will return. His shadow, under his yoke, under his leadership, under his instruction is the shadow. Not just the shadow, because everybody dwells under the shadow of Yah. He sits at the throne room of heaven, at the tops of tops of, of, of I don't even know what to call it. I don't know, y'all, I wouldn't call it universe. I know it's of heaven, but is it the top of creation? I guess he sits on the top of creation. So even the angels, Yahushua, everything is under the shadow of Yah. But he said, they that dwell under his shadow shall return. They that dwell under my yoke. They that dwell under my instruction. Ephraim, as cocky and reckless as I done said in these 14 chapters you done been. One of these days, you're going to wake up and say, man, we can't keep messing with these idols. Man, it's been hectic out here trying to. We heard you, y'all. We filed. And Hoshiah knowing probably in this moment, it ain't going to be these parents around who doing it now. It's going to be their kids, 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 kids one day in the future who going to be like, yeah, it's time to get back. And that's what's happening now. That's what all you doing. Everybody out here is a child of somebody. And then he says, who is wise? They going to understand. The prudent, he going to know. For the ways of Yah is right. And that's why no matter what's going on around us, we going to do what's right. Because you can't be talking about you in the ways of Yah if you ain't doing what's right. Ain't going to be no, ain't no big eyes and little U's. Ain't no, <laughs> man, ain't going to be none of that, man. We going to do what's right. Y'all like y'all going to do what's right one way or the other. 
You're going to do it willingly or I'm going to force you to do it. But you're going to do what's right. And you better get it right before it's too late. Because if you don't get it right before it's too late, sadly, I got to judge you the same way I judge the angels because I'm a righteous judge. And I got to judge everybody accordingly. The angels, the fallen angels will be judged to the highest extent because they were in heaven. They know Yah better than every man on the planet. They physically were there. They've seen Yah on the throne, possibly, you know, but they've seen the creation. They've seen the star. They ain't confused about the calendar and when the year started and when Passover. No, 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 no. But still in all, even to us being more ignorant than them, we gonna be judged too. And the only way to be right by that is we gotta be in the ways of Yah. And that means we got to do what's right based off what Yah says is right. That's why we got to read our Bible. Because what's right in the world, it's okay to steal from poor people if you're rich and you uh, give back a little money. That's okay. In the world, it's okay to sleep with another man's wife. It's okay for a woman to be a side chick. She cool with the sneaky link and I don't want to be his wife anyway. She can deal with all his problems. He just come lay up with me and spend his money. That's okay in the world we live in today. That's not frowned upon no more. That's okay. We live in a world now where they're trying to make pedophilia common it's okay to do that and some cultures that's okay we ain't trying to be right by what the world say we try to be right by what the instructions of y'all say and we can't do this enough so for all of us to know what the instructions of y'all say as the scriptures say here a little there a little we got to read and learn the instructions of y'all and the instructions of y'all is in the entire bible it ain't just in one place it don't matter where you start but like i said before i wouldn't start in revelation <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to fully grasp that. The only way to fully grasp Revelation is you got to have a handle on the rest of the Bible. We may end this prophecy little series in Revelation. We'll see. We'll see. That's so far away. You're talking about it'll be next year, probably before we done with that. But Jerry, I mean, Isaiah is 66 chapters. So you're talking about Isaiah may take us a year. That's why I think we're going to do Makai first. Because once we get in Isaiah, we may be there a year. You just never know how I go. It depends on how. And some of them chapters is big, so I know we're not going to be meshing two and three together. But either way, we got to learn the instruction to y'all to do what's right. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments about anything we read today? We're going to end it right there. Thanks for reading, Lord. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom always. Anything you got? Hallelujah. How's CJ doing? Oh, he good. He cutting up. I ain't need to go sit down. How the rest of the boys do? How Isaac and Aiden doing? They doing good. They're in there chilling right now. She, I had to catch CJ, man, because he just, I don't know. He won't listen. He hard-headed, man. I caught him down there trying to exercise, man, trying to box and everything. Oh, he got to be cool. I know. He don't listen, though. He just like, man, I got to get back. I feel greater than ever. I'm like, oh, this dude here. But he's been praying more, though, and talking to the Father. So, hallelujah. He does his own studies. He's on his grown man thing now, on his search for y'all. So, I'm like, hey, I get it. Hey, let that man be great then. Fall back. Oh, I am. No, the Father got him. After the Father take you through something like that, usually afterwards, yeah, I ain't got to tell you. You good. You know where to go now. Because now you get yeah. it. Like, yeah, without him, you're going to die. I try to get you? that, like, through to my sons at a young age, but... Sometimes the father, you know, he pull you through things. And the and the greater, and I try to tell him like all that time, like the greater feeling is when the father crowned you and you know you've been crowned because of everything that he put you through. Your testimony is stronger that way. And it and it builds more of a relationship with the father when you have to rely on him. See, people I mean they rely on him for money, cars, and all this stupid stuff. Uh the true, you know, the true reliance of the father in faith is uh in death because see death is what everyone fear but if you have true faith in the father you don't fear death you don't fear anything you don't fear man you don't feel death you know you fear y'all like that that's that is your end all go all if he's mad at you man you should know you ain't gonna be nothing in life or in death hallelujah tell john i said shalom tell your whole family i said shabbat shalom no i definitely will most definitely. You tell Ari I said shalom too and Shelly. Ariel probably hear you, man. She might. Ariel been saying shalom to more people lately too. That's been kind of funny. Yeah, leave her alone. She's look, she she cutting out her shell. She coming out, just give her a chance. 
Hey, if y'all, if y'all, if any of you are ever on the phone with me, just listen in the background. Ari will be all in the background talking about some shalom. <laughs> look, 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 I ain't mad at her. Look, she be getting it now. Now she's she getting into her own skin. I told you it's coming. She's gonna talk a lot. Um, You'll see. But but shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Camille. How you doing? If you're there, I believe you're there. Shabbat shalom. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How uh, I believe you down in Texas, right, Dallas? Yes, that's where I'm at. <laughs> How that's treating you? It's going good. We got a beautiful day. I'm going to go outside, take a walk, and read my word, and just spend some time with y'all. Hallelujah. You ain't have to rub it in. It's cold up here. <laughs> hey, it's it's going to be back down to the 60s tomorrow, so you got to take take it while, while we have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to do, see you doing well. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, Sammy. Are you back? Sammy, where are you at, man? Shabbat shalom. I am back. <laughs> Sadly. Okay. So you back. Yeah. It was nice. I got a taste of the good weather, you know. Now I'm back. I'm glad to be back, though. It's not too bad. Hallelujah. I'm glad you enjoyed your trip, too. I, I pray that the album was blessing you the whole way. Yes, he's I I just it's so like the nature over there is unbelievable. Like it's pretty here too, but in certain times of the year. So yeah, you know I love to hike and everything. So that was a huge blessing for me. Hallelujah. I'm glad to hear you well. And I still have to come by and give uh Ari that balance beam so she can start flipping. I, honestly, <laughs> I'm not even in no rush for that, man. <laughs> Whenever I gotta show her some stuff. Hey, whenever you get a chance, man, we ain't in no rush for that. <laughs> Hold on, Roboto. Thank you. Of course. And Shabbat Shalom to everybody and Shelly and Ari. Most definitely. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, my nah. I'm calling you later, my nah. Do not be playing around, man. I am calling you. I don't know if you hear me. I know the boys might be turning up, but expect a call from me sometime this evening. You and your Hakanan, if she can hear me. Shabbat shalom to you both, man. I got to get y'all on the phone. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to y'all this evening. How you doing, your Hakanan? What am I not doing? She fell asleep? You know it. The usual. Shabbat shalom, everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. How you doing? Good. I was I was late to the call because we both were really really tired. We got in, and we've been having like some really late days. <laughs> Pretty much, we've been up half the night, and I was literally up till five this morning. So, but hallelujah, I made it to the call. So, hello, hallelujah. I'll make sure you let her know. I said I'm gonna give her a call sometime this evening. Oh, she hear you. She 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 up now. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, you most definitely. I'm gonna be hitting y'all up. Okay, shalom, shalom, Michelle, Shelly, and Ari. I say, shalom. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, uh, Alan. I believe that's Bush. Shabbat shalom. Always good to see you. If you can hear me, I do believe that's you, though. It's always a pleasure to have you on the calls. Hallelujah. It's been real. And Shabbat Shalom to you all, man. Shabbat Shalom. Tiff, I, I believe we're going to see you today if you're free. That'll be cool. I know you're a busy woman out here, though. Yeah, Shalom, bro. I'm going to try to get out there to you guys. It's a beautiful read, though. Like, I loved everything a bit of this nice read today. But I'm going to try to get out there to see you guys. I've just been busy with the kids. They Saturdays, um, game day. It's like, you can't really sit down. Even though I'm off work, we got I got to run them around. But we're okay. Hallelujah. It's good that you, hey, I was still making a way for you to come fellowship with us and, and we can read together. So that's a blessing. And I'm, I'm thankful. I'm honored that he would allow me to read with you, sis. Uh, definitely. Like, even though I was busy with him, I kind of just stood to the side and got into the word and everything. I'm here. They doing them, but I'm here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Uh, Anybody want to take us out in prayer? If anybody want to take us out in prayer? Hallelujah. The floor is yours. 
Hallelujah. All right, I'll take us out in prayer. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> as always, it's just told our Rabbata Abiyah for blessing us to see another day. Um, it is an honor, I'll be on them. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled that you would allow me to, uh, that you would pour, you know, the understanding that the little bit of understanding that I have in your word into me to share it with, um, friends and family, but all family, considering we're from the house of Israel. Uh, that's a blessing, I'll be on that you would allow me the, the opportunity to do that and I just pray that you continue to humble me and, and teach me to do right by that. Um, I pray the same for everybody on the call who um, Abiyah is calling all of you to. You might not have a Zoom call, but Abiyah is calling you to speak this truth to somebody. Um, and even more than speaking, he's calling you to be an example of what this word is supposed to be. Keep you cool. Always pray and repent. Stay humble. Um it's also a time to rebuke, but even in rebuking somebody, know that it is a proper way to do that. And the Father is calling us to move according, um, to move according to um, these laws, statutes, and commandments. And it's just a code of conduct of doing right by people, doing right by our families, um, watching our tongue, um, and even in rebuke, doing it in a way to try to profit somebody to do better and, and not to just shame anybody. That's not what this is about. Um, and I just pray that I'll be y'all puts the words in all of you all's mouths as, um, um, and he guides all of you all's feet and your hands and your work and your actions to uh, be an example of his likeness and his image to anybody who may be watching that you don't know watching or anybody who's listening that you don't know listening. And I just pray that the Father continues to shine his light on you all and guide every one of you um, to represent his word properly. As I pray that he guides me as well, and I ask all you to pray um, and ask him to continue to guide me also. Uh, I pray for the Yakult team, man. They had a family member who died this week, Father, that you will bring shalom upon our family, Lauren, um, upon our uncles, um, and that you will continue to use all situations to the good and that uh, hopefully, in this time that somebody will realize the power of you, um, the mercy that you have, and that you'll use this opportunity to wake somebody up to your word, to cause them to want to learn more of your instructions, to apply more of your instructions to their life, and to walk in your instructions and to strive for your perfection. Um, I pray that everybody has good health on this call. I'll be off and be your holy will. I don't need to know what anybody's going through because you know. Uh, and I just pray that you strengthen all of your servants, all of your shepherds and prophets in the making that you are calling Abiyah with strong uh, uh, physical stature, sound minds, and the correct focus to go on to do your work as you are calling all of us to do. Uh, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Father Yah, we just pray that you bless all of the children, Father Yah. Uh, in these trying times with so much wickedness in this world that you hedge about, as you said, with your prophets, you hedge and you guard and you protect all of our children, Abiyah, um, and you keep them under the shadow of your wing where we understand that we're under the shadow of your wing and under your protection and under your hedge that is guarded by your angels or your Melachim, um, there is no weapon truly formed against any of us that can prosper. I pray for all of the single mothers. I'll be out of struggling out here in this world. And men have, uh, uh, for whatever reason, not been present. Um, that you continue to let them know that even where they are, where the fatherless are, that you are the heavenly father and you have been with us all from the beginning. And even if it's not a physical father, there is a father. And that you are the greatest father, the king. And that whatever you see fit, whatever your will be, our single mothers will be okay who have primarily raised your nation, Abiyah. I pray that you take the haughtiness off of our women, Abiyana, and allow them to humble themselves and to not humble themselves uh, to what the world says, but humble themselves to the word of Yah and to move according to the word of Yah, no matter what it is. For in you, as the word just said, there is no other savior. And I pray that you teach our women that. I pray for all of the young men in jail and um, 
just out here bad. I'll be out that you continue to have mercy on our people and lost people. Um, we know that you will judge wickedness accordingly, I'll be out. We thank you for that, but we also ask you to have mercy on the ignorant, on the lost, um, and to continue to wake our people up, especially our men, to come back into their rightful position of leading families and households in righteousness and in truth and humility, um, and to teach our, our women and our children um, to let them know that they have a covering in the house um, that you've called us to be the leaders of our household, um, the protectors, uh, so that our people will know that they are not alone. I pray that in these jails, where I know from firsthand, I'll be out there's plenty of Bibles in jail, and I just pray that that word speaks to somebody um, who may be in a low place. But as long as the word of Yah is present, he can be, he can be held high. And I just pray that you have mercy on us all. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 All praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, y'all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shalom. Good to see everybody. Obadiah, you can expect the call as well. Okay. Hallelujah. Maybe hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Mama. Shabbat shalom. Uh -huh. Shabbat shalom. It's not this evening, Obadiah. Tomorrow, I'm going to be hitting you up. Got you. Everybody have a good evening. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.